So as you all know by now, earlier today, Donald Trump was found guilty. And everyone's focused on how is this going to affect Donald Trump? How is this going to affect his campaign? But what I'm focused on is the future of America overall. Because everyone is so hyper-focused on the present that I feel like we've kind of lost sight of the future. In about four short years, Donald Trump, regardless if he wins or not, his presidency, if he does win, will be over. If Biden wins or not, his presidency will be over. We will be done with the Biden-Trump stuff in four years, and then what? Where do we go from there? And as lines are being drawn in the sand right now, I think what people are kind of missing, people are missing the fact that this is going to affect all of us. It doesn't matter if you hate the guy or if you love the guy, you're going to be affected. The country you live in is going to be affected. And how can you look at how, how can anyone look at what has transpired in our country over like the last eight years or so and think that things aren't going to get worse in the months, weeks, maybe even years to come? Because I feel like this country, I feel like there's a huge possibility that this country spirals all the way out of control. And once that starts happening, it's going to be too late to stop it. And I think in the long run, the line that people are drawing in the sand right now and the sides that people are choosing, I know you're caught up in the, in the hype of things right now. Everyone's choosing their own tribes. I get it. I get it. But I think in the long run, we're all going to be kind of screwed. Because what happened today is something that we've seen happen throughout history. This has happened before, not in America, in other countries, in other countries that winded up failing. So what I predict to see moving forward is there's now going to be an active effort all the time to throw the leaders of this political party or that political party in jail, in prison. And once we get to that point in this country, which now we are, there's no turning back. The next president will go after his political rivals. Then the next president after that will go after his or her political rivals. And before you know it, the country that you thought existed will no longer exist. And I'm not saying this to tell you that you should not support what happened today or you should support what happened today. Feel free to feel how you want to feel. But I would encourage people to go look at history. And go look at how things like this changed countries forever. And once we get to this point when we're locking up political leaders from various parties, the levels of unrest within the country are going to reach uncontainable levels. Because I say it all the time, right now when you go online, it seems like everyone's ready for a civil war, everyone's divided, everyone's at odds. But then when you walk outside in the real world, it doesn't feel as bad. But things like this is pushing the needle. It's definitely pushing the needle. And as I was saying at the beginning of this video, what I'm worried about right now is I'm worried about you all. I'm worried about myself. I'm worried about my neighbors. I'm worried about your neighbors. I'm worried about how this overall is going to affect our lives in whatever way that it may affect it. Because you can be happy or you can be angry about what happened today, but what happened today is basically the powers that be took the snow globe and they shook it up a bit. 
It's like they took a, what are those things called? Where, where you got the ants, you know, like a little ant exhibit, the ant farm. They took the ant farm and they stirred it up a little bit. They shook things up. And now people are going to be at each other's throats. And that's, I think, what the overall goal is, is to keep people as divided as possible. But before I go any further, I want to go ahead and roll this clip really quickly, and then I'll be right back with more Good evening. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank uh, the jury for its service. Uh, jurors perform a fundamental civic duty. Their service is literally the cornerstone of our judicial system. We should all uh, be thankful for the careful attention uh, that this jury paid to the evidence and the law um, and their time and commitment over these past several weeks. Uh, Twelve everyday New Yorkers uh, and of course our alternates heard testimony from 22 witnesses including former and current employees of the defendant, media executives, book publishers, custodians of records and others. They reviewed call logs, text messages, and emails. They heard recordings. They saw checks and invoices, bank statements, and calendar appointments. This type of white collar prosecution is core to what we do at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. In the 1930s, District Attorney Thomas Dewey ushered in the era of the modern independent professional prosecutor. For now nearly 90 years, dedicated professionals in this office have built upon that fine tradition. A major part of our practice during that nearly 90 years has been public integrity work, including cases uh, involving jurists, local and state electeds, uh, public servants, and others. I want to thank this phenomenal prosecution team uh, embodying the finest traditions of this office, professionalism, integrity, dedication, and service. Uh, they are model public servants, uh, and I am proud and humbled to serve side by side with them. The 12 everyday jurors vowed to make a decision based on the evidence and the law, and the evidence and the law alone. Their deliberations led them to a unanimous conclusion beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, Donald J. Trump, is guilty of 34 counts of falsifying business records in the first degree to conceal a scheme to corrupt the 2016 election. And while this defendant may be unlike any other in American history, we arrived at this trial and ultimately today at this verdict in the same manner as every other case that comes through the courtroom doors, by following the facts and the law and doing so without fear or favor. I want to conclude uh, by expressing deep gratitude uh, to the NYPD and the officers of the officers of the Office of Court Administration uh, for securing the courthouse, all of our safety, making sure that the courthouse and all of the other matters that are important in their own right continued uh, seamlessly. Uh, they will continue to be and have always been uh, incredible partners. Thank you. This is the final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. We will rout the fake news media, and we will liberate America from these villains once and for all. All right, a video Donald Trump just posted to his social media account, it appears what they did was took a rally speech of his, because you can hear the applause, and then they put it on top of video of him walking in black and white, obviously prepared and 
uh, ready for this moment, words he has said before. Uh, Donald Trump also said that this is a sad day, and he marks a day, this is the day, for the first time in 247 years, a former president was convicted of a crime and tried for 34 felony counts. There's never been a felon who's ran for president, let alone been the clear favorite. 67% of voters say a guilty verdict won't affect who they vote for. 17% say is less likely to vote for Trump because of it, 15% more likely. So it kind of becomes a wash very difficult to poll what people are going to do based on a hypothetical. So we wait for a week or two for these numbers to sink you know, in. After the guilty verdict came in and we saw several different people speaking out, I couldn't help but kind of laugh at the smirks, the smiles, and the smug looks that were on some of these people's faces. Because I honestly think that they don't really understand what they just did today. Because you see, a lot of these people live in a bubble. They live in an echo chamber, in an echo chamber filled with people who are suffering from TDS. Now, personally, I don't care if you hate Trump. You're allowed to hate whoever you want to hate. But... If hating someone or a particular person becomes your entire personality and you kind of dedicate your life to hating that person, that's just kind of going overboard. But that's the echo chamber these people live in. And I don't think they understand how the outside world and the general public is reacting to this. Because, you know, I don't consider myself a conservative at all. But I'm also far from whatever the left has become as well. So I don't know what people would call me. I get accused of being this and that all the time. I don't really care. But from the outside looking in on this situation, just being totally honest about what I'm seeing, at least on social media, I think this is backfiring. I think they intended to like assassinate Donald Trump's character with all of these cases they brought against him, regardless if you think these cases are just or not. They definitely wanted to tarnish his reputation, but it's not working. In fact, it seems like it's making people even more passionate about voting for the guy. I think that if you woke up this morning hating Donald Trump, you still hate Donald Trump. And if you woke up this morning loving Donald Trump, you still love Donald Trump. I don't think this guilty verdict changed anything. I haven't seen one person that was like, I was voting for Donald Trump, but now that he was found guilty, I'm done. I have seen a few people, though, say that they weren't going to vote at all, but now this is, has inspired them to vote for Trump. So in a weird way, I don't think they intended for this to happen, but at least from what I've seen. And like I said, you know, sometimes in the outside world, things are different than they are on social media. But from what I've seen, I don't see, you know, people really getting outraged. You see the people who love Trump, they're outraged that he got found guilty, but they're not like turning their backs on Trump. And then you see the people who hate Trump cheering it on. But even if they took it as far as throwing Donald Trump in prison, I think a lot of people are still going to vote for him. Because you want to know what happened? I think these people went so crazy about Trump for so many years that people kind of got tired to listening to it. So, so no matter what happens, no matter what he gets found guilty of at this point, regardless if you think he's guilty or not, most people aren't going to care because it's kind of like the boy who cried wolf situation. I think there's plenty of people who didn't even really like Trump, didn't even care about Trump. They just got tired of night and day. Every TV channel they turn on, every radio station, it's just people crying and screaming about Trump at the top of their lungs. I mean, it kind of got sickening after a while. And now that we're to the point where they got Trump where they want him, you know what I mean? Like, they're finally 
finding him guilty of stuff. No one even cares anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, And I think this, honestly, what I'm trying to say here is I think this may have had a bigger impact had they not have gone crazy, overly, too overly dramatically crazy about Trump for like the last eight year, eight or so years now. So now we reach the point where people are already tuned out. You could say or anything about Trump. You could try to bring up anything. No one even cares anymore. They're tired of hearing it. People are just tired of it, honestly. But as I was saying, I think that even if Donald Trump is in a, even if Donald Trump is in a jail cell, I think people are still going to vote for the guy. Let me know what you think. <clears throat> because he hasn't been sentenced yet. And we know that what they really want is to throw this guy behind bars. They've made that obvious. It's not a conspiracy. We know that. So if that does happen, will that change your mind? I know that I asked you all earlier, did the verdict change your mind? I haven't seen anyone say that it has. I've seen plenty of people say, hey, I never was going to vote for Trump in the first place. And I've seen plenty of people say, no, I'm still voting for Trump. But even if he's in jail, even if they throw him behind bars, are you still going to vote for him? Let us know down in the comments below. But as far as I'm concerned, you can take your political beliefs out of the equation and just understand that regardless of who you vote for or what side you're on, things are about to get crazy for all of us. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day as Americans, I wish no ill will on anyone. I just wish that we could all get along and we wouldn't have to worry about all of this crazy nonsense. But unfortunately, that's not the reality that we live in. So going forward, I think that a new standard has been set today. I doubt there's going to be any going back from here. So I just think everyone should at least, I'm not saying that you need to go out and do this or you need to hoard up a bunch of perishable or non-perishable items you know you don't need a doomsday prep that's not what i'm telling you but you need to prep your mind for the fact that we are entering into unfounded times in this country and as crazy as this upcoming election is going to be i can't i can't help but wonder what's after that because usually things have a habit of getting crazier crazier and crazier right Things don't usually get crazy and then just calm down out of nowhere. It's like things escalate. So what's next? <laughs> you know what I mean? But for now, let me know your thoughts about all of this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you would like to donate to the channel, you can donate via Cash App or Super Thanks. But with all of that being said, I want you all to remember one thing. Always remember to remain opinionated.